All right, hi everyone from Paris, and I am Greg, aka Grégoire, providing you opinions, informations, guesses uh, about Scotch whiskey, but also other world, other whiskies from the world, and sometimes other spirits too. Um, today, as the uh, uh, Christmas is approaching and every uh, a festive uh, things going on are uh, started to be organized there is the usual uh, challenges for Christmas uh, in the YouTube whiskey community there are also uh, all kinds of lists that you can also cross and see the different channels what the, the one brings what the other brings that the first one doesn't bring it's, it's very complimentary in my opinion and uh, like I said it's super personal so you cannot please everyone you cannot also people cannot find sometimes the same whiskies you're talking about etc etc so uh, before I do something more festive and maybe more uh, close to others do in terms of advising you whiskies for Christmas I wanted to do a video which is a kind of reverse uh, one of the one I did last year and I'm gonna put a link in the description uh, so you will be able to find it I did a video called 15 whiskies I always restock and I explain in the video why these whiskies for me at least are interesting uh, so this time I wanted to do things a bit differently and uh, as you know there's no for those who know me well there's no double speak in the channel it doesn't mean I don't have to be diplomat because uh, you're uh, dialoguing with the whiskey industry you cannot only just uh, praise them or only insult them you have to find something which is decent and honorable and that you can be proud of to express your opinions uh, so bring some nuance or also uh, some different uh, approach to uh, what some others do and so did I and I have two lists for you one very short because the other one is long uh, first I will explore three whiskies they could have been others but I, I picked three whiskies that I consider uh, regarding my collection, which is numerous, um, are, let's say, in precarious position or on ejection seats, if it's less uh, cool to say that maybe, but regarding their replacement in my collection or restock. Uh, and replacement has an interesting world, but I will get shortly to meaning i mean get shortly to that um so those three are bottlings that recently or the ones i bought or the ones i tried recently uh several batches etc did disappoint me but i'm not sure if uh, there are so many batch variations uh, and i would like to try more different batches before I put those three whiskies into the not the bin but <laughs> into the not replace not restock list which is the main one today so uh, let's say I give them a chance to shine uh, let's say this year or next year before I uh, decide to replace them or not uh, and you will be surprised because there are some very famous and successful whiskies and even some uh, I like um, but disclaimer I have to tell you that for the 15 whiskies list and for those three lists these whiskies I don't consider they are bad mind you please they're not bad whiskies they're just whiskies that considering the amount of whiskies I have now in my collection which is several hundreds regarding the the, the room it takes and it's saturated uh, to be clear uh, here I have when the bottle is over is finished I have to do choices 
and say this one I'm gonna take another one and on this one no no it's not worth it's not a good value anymore also the price question or simply I think for the money I can find something better with the same or close to profile aromatic profile so those things are to be considered regarding my choices please so one they don't they no longer meet my expectations and probably not good value as well and second uh, it will make room into my collection for new whiskies <laughs> and also to have a bit more space but it's presumptuous at this stage i have to say so yeah once this disclaimer said also i forgot to mention uh, you will find no single cask in there some partly well they say limited editions but when you have uh, let's say uh, hundred thousands of whiskies it's not so limited right so i will not pick in this uh, selection single cask uh, so uh, it condemns a lot of indie bottlings simply because uh, when you have the bottle and you don't necessarily open it right away and the time you get to the shoulder uh, you pass the neck pour etc and you get to know well your bottle and maybe begin to appreciate it some bottles can be appreciated right away others not simply the bottle the the this let's say 355 uh, bottles release is not available anymore or at secondary uh, too expensive for your wallet or my wallet so that's why those are excluded uh, on the list also it's not exhaustive i picked 15 but i could have picked 30 uh, or 25 or but i had to make a quick choice um, and also to find things maybe for most of them not all that uh, you are able to find so uh, in a way it's also a list to uh, if you're on my way of thinking and if you're on my taste close to my tastes of course i will avoid you to spend money <laughs> simply with doing this video so this is also the the i think something important for the viewer to have a say uh, of someone who has some experience and will but you will understand what i mean in, in a second okay not wanting to be too long this is one of the three first whiskies which i i'm questioning myself when the bottle will be finished will i buy it again i'm not sure i don't want to say no right away um, and even the other ones you will see if there's a miracle and a super great batch of something that i don't like anymore or don't like enough maybe i will change my mind it's not it's not carved in marble that's what I mean so I will tell you in a second what this is uh, very popular whiskey by the way it seems um, so but I will play by uh, first world whiskies then scotch whiskies and scotch whiskies in alpha alphabetical order right enough said uh, first whiskey and I'm really really uh, it, it breaks my heart uh, almost <laughs> it's not exaggerate but I have this bottle which is a French whiskey French single malt it's a flagship of French uh, first historical uh, whiskey distillery and also a flagship of French whiskey in my opinion but this is a bottling from 2012 or 11 uh, it's something that's quite old it's not what it looks anymore now it looks like that see and the problem is I tried uh, I love this uh, I have a, a bottle in advance fortunately but this version which was slightly pitted is gone now there's no more pit in there and the uh, barley is uh, organic not necessarily all uh, local but it's organic and the profile has changed i have a mini that someone uh, offered me that i tried once and i tried the classic this uh, to 2022 release in the whiskey life berry and i was disappointed it has some grainy some kind of a bit 
green as well elements that were not really there or not uh, as balanced as in this one uh, also this one had some older casks and I don't know this something's not going on really well uh, maybe two different batches I don't like a lot but this one is on on the precarious position uh, potentially to figure in the list next year so yeah I'm a bit worried about this uh, emblematic expression of a uh, French whiskey so hope you will uh, be in better shape uh, in the future second one and I know I'm gonna surprise I'm gonna get a lot of heat with this video I'm sure but I don't uh, care it's my opinion and uh, like i said it can change as well yes aaron sherry cask or the bodega version uh, this is a batch from 2019 this is natural cast strength this is uh, i heard uh, from the producer it was around seven years old it's sherry monster in theory uh, but in practice it is for me a bit too young it is for me a bit frustrating comes across it's better now at this level but uh, the first third let's say it was really uh, annoyingly uh, aggressive a bit harsh and uh, a bit too sour sherry for me so very modern uh, even maybe some some charring or something going on that marks a bit too much with oak and, and a sourness for me. So I do enjoy it very sparsely uh, every now and then, but it was not super expensive. But for me, for this kind of 50s, 60s or a bit more, I think I can find better than that. Uh, I can find better than that. Um, and we will we will see which other choices I could find uh, sherry wise in the second list so yeah so this one also is in precarious position uh, so it's the first uh, s scotch whiskey on the list you will see that there are a lot now <laughs> for some it's the whiskey of the year each year and not for me I'm sorry as much as I love the distillery and uh, David Brody, please forgive me. <laughs> this and this, I have it on the, in the glass. I've known this at 40% ABV 20 years ago or so. I've known this uh, on the first release of Distel. Um, and I don't remember the year now, but I think it was rebranded in the around the 2022. 12 something like that not sure um, 46.3 non chill filtered natural color okay but so what does it mean it delivers as it should deliver uh, for me okay I'm in the mid uh, well there's 30 CL uh, gone so it's almost a mid bottle and it only starts to shine now so for me it's a problem uh, if I can't enjoy the first half of the bottle, why bother? Uh, and also, it is lightly pitted. This is what I have in the glass. So this is all about sherry, but it's for me the problem. It's a sherry that's a bit muted. Uh, the mouthful is thin, doesn't match the the ABV uh, announced. And the finish is short so my problem and I will come back to this in a Buna video uh, that will do soon uh, an overview of my I think five bottlings now uh, this is only official I have uh, for years now and my concern is that every single uh, independent bottling I tried from Buna since let's say 10 years everyone from four five six years old Buna uh, when very pitied is uh, uh, amazing uh, at a young age Buna Haven they were all superior and the four I have they're all superior to this and they're all in the butlings 
Not all single cask, mind you, but they're all in the battlings. There's something here that's muted in the 18 as well, in the 25 of what I remember. I don't understand why this result with all the, the, the potential. Is it a problem with the master blender? Sorry, Julian, I don't know. Uh, because I have this problem with the le official Lechig and other distilleries from the group as well. I don't know. I don't want to be too radical on this one because it's in the first category, which is on a precarious position, but it's I haven't decided yet if I'm going to buy it again or not. But let's get quickly because we have a lot of whiskeys to mention on the palette. Mm, the attack is amazing. The mid palette is disappointing. And the finish, there's... It's a weak finish. At least this batch. Um, I've noted it's 2000, supposed to be 2019, but uh, the batch says L17 uh, 297. So my guess it's from 2017, but it's very hard to find out. Uh, and I don't know why. So yeah, something quite frustrating. A frustrating whiskey, not a bad whiskey, but The attack is amazing, and then everything thinks to turn licorice and a bit bitter, slightly sour. Is it a problem of cask selection? Some being not musty, but being kind of uh, erasing the distillery character? I don't know, this full sherry thing doesn't seem really to fit in the uh, in this kind of let's say this kind of official bottling small batch it says so yeah uh, i will come back to this longer in a dedicated video about the distillery but for now yeah it's in that list and i'm gonna put a pen here to mark the difference the border between the uh, precarious position and the uh, the ones that I really no, don't want to uh, buy again. So I have to say I'm sorry. There are a couple of Irish Irishes I could have chosen others, but the list would have been too long. This is a beautiful bottle in terms of packaging, the nice cork and all that jazz. This used to be called in the past Crested 10 and it seems some expressions were at 43%, uh, but I'm not sure. This was supposed to be tasty, it was supposed to be a, a step up from the original, the regular entry level Jameson. It is in a bit, but it's so much... Uh, it is so much... Uh, I don't want to say industrialized, but it's so much sanitized and some say that uh, there's not much left after that. Uh, and it's a pity because if it was worked better, in my opinion, it will be a, a winner. But yeah, uh, no matter what I do, see the level, it took a lot of time. I use it as a mixer uh, since this level because it was fairly disappointing. So yeah, this one I will not restock, that's for sure. But it's not the only Irish. I'm gonna surprise you or shock you, I don't know. It's not the only Irish. There's some Talamore you as well. But there's this one. This one was quite sour, uh, almost all the first third. It begins, now, it begins now to be a bit more palatable uh, in terms of coherence of the aromatic profile. It was a bit it was way too sour at the beginning is it a cork problem some distilleries has a cork problem uh, not only in Ireland but in Scotland as well 
uh, art bag sometimes. Uh, Old Paltney is famous for his bad quality, I'm sorry, corks. Uh, Springbank sometimes as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice whiskey, but as a single pot still, it fails to deliver what the Powers John Lane, for instance, 12, uh, and even the regular, uh, the old 12, uh, uh, delivers. So, uh, yeah, I prefer the yellow spot, if you want to know. I haven't tried the red and the blue and the gold, but yeah, so you see it, is, it accumulates and it starts to be really worrying. But what is even more worrying is when uh, you go to another continent and you try once or twice a whiskey that you think is great and has a great feedback, has a great packaging as well. This is one of the, th let's say, 30 best distilleries in the world. No matter, I mean, uh, if you look oh, beyond the categories of types of whiskies, I mean, and it's Buffalo Trace stuff. Uh, juice and it's the eagle rare 10 years old why 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 i bought this i was so happy to buy this and then it appeared and also i tried also another batch in the show and it was the same problem the oakiness this is too tight this has too much tannins like another one i could have named the knob creek nine years old from mm, a lot of time ago these are not for my palate. I, I don't know. Uh, there's some American whiskies, some bourbons that are quite oaky that I still manage to enjoy. But this one is difficult. Uh, but you'll never know. But yeah, I won't buy this again. Uh, I'm too happy with my mixtures. I'm sorry to drop names there, but to uh, and I was so impressed by the high west I tried uh, in a show that yeah okay let's go because we're only at the first third and it's a uh, it's not serious staying in the North America this was something I was offered I asked for it to my family in Canada and then bring it back to me it's a liter bottle uh, canadian club a classic uh, blend uh, it's industrialized clearly uh, not only the 40 percent some 40 percent again are fantastic super expressive but this one has some nice car natural caramel notes but also some nice artificial caramel notes it's a bit flat it's uh, it's not a great experience. It's not bad. It's probably pleasant on ice and pleasant as a sipper, no brainer, etc. But uh, this is, like I said, considering the the room needed for a collection, etc., etc. Uh, and now that I have a bit, not much, but uh, some other Canadian blends, I think that's way better than this. So this one I will not replace it either. C'est la vie. But still uh, high to my Canadian friends and uh, among those I will replace forever. You never know, but lot 40, of course. Where are we now? We are uh, going uh, to complete other direction of the world and we are in Japan. In Japan I could have picked some uh, different bottles but to put a long story short i chose this uh this i think i have a backup bottle but i'm not sure uh this when i tried the first batches of this and i did a master class with a, a friend who was uh, we did a pairing wine whiskey and food uh, with comparison uh, between the wine and the whiskey and this was against the Chardonnay uh, that I thought should be interesting because at that time the the Hakshu batches of batches of the distillers reserve were really really super mineral and super uh, evocative of the, the, the beauty, uh, the grapes, uh, white grapes, etc. of the Chardonnay, for instance. 
uh, white uh, reza, raisins, uh, and this was such a disappointment to see the the next batches. So this one uh, from 2014. This one it was supposed to contain eight to twenty years old uh, casks uh, in there of Hakshu. Uh, Hakshu is a fantastic distillery. Uh, they discontinued a while ago, uh, I think it might be before the 2015 shortage. The 10 years old, which I still have a bit, which is 10 times better than this. With that foresty, rainforest, grassy element we love, and mineral we love so much in uh, in Hakshu. And a wink to my friend uh, Mac at Kampai Planet, I hope he won't be too much shocked. About this one, uh, the Yamazaki, which I didn't bought, Distillers Reserve, is worse, <laughs> let me tell you. It's a lot of relying, a lot on sweetness of the wine casks. There are no wine casks here, thank God, but it's a bit frustrating experience, uh, at least nowadays. So this one I will not replace. And now, guess what? We're entering into uh, more pain for me because it's Scotland and Scotch whiskies. And what happened? There was a whisky which was a long time for me um, benchmark of Speyside or uh, emblematic of what is a gourmet and a very fruity, very um, uh, compote uh, of fruit. Uh, whiskey very comforting, some kind of the equivalent of the Calvados in France, uh, as it's full of apples and a bit of pears. It was the Abelard 16, and this is a batch, uh, if I remember well, from 2010 or 14. Uh, let me check a sec. Yeah, so uh, this is a, a 2015 batch. Um, and, um, and I hope it won't be cutting it. Um, it was bottled on 15 September of 2017, um, uh, sorry, 17 uh, September 17 of 2015. The batch is LKRG3959. It's the double cask matured. Uh, this is still great. This is one of the last decent, quite decent, uh, a bit more than decent even, uh, batches of the 16. But I think it's the last bottle I have after I bought around four, or three, four, five, I don't know, um, for a decade. Uh, this was one of the best, uh, when I started, one of the best single malt and best value around um let's say 10 years ago um and um slowly 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 it started to decrease a bit and also all the range i noticed uh, in all the range a change of profile those last years with something now uh, maybe it's the fermentation time maybe it's uh, the, the brewing phase i don't know but it comes across, uh, even on the nose, uh, the, I mean, more contemporary than this one. The Aberlaus come across a bit more sour than before. Uh, a bit not acidic, but relying on, on, on more ferment, longer probably fermentation time. And also there's something uh, like lower quality sherry. This is bourbon and sherry and kind of a lower seasoned sherry rather than deep old sherry. Um, and it's the same for the rest of the range. I have the 14 double cask matcher as well, which is nice, but not 43, but 40%, which works less well, uh, still good, but I have the triple cask and the cask an anam, uh, which are more recent expressions than uh, the abuna I also have. So I don't know, um, this I've been told is still there, but it's 40% now instead of 43. I don't know, I haven't seen recently a bottle of this, but I'm, I'm not going to run to replace it uh, by the same. And if I have to buy another Abelau, it'll probably be 
for a weekly use let's say the triple cask which is cheap no age statement 40 percent and for some time to time sips maybe the cask anam or uh, a good batch of abuna which is more and more difficult to find right half an hour is gone i knew it uh, next on the list it's uh, sorry rachel it's the new era uh, the era when the master blender is on the front label and when the master blender likes to do some wood technology so i already reviewed this one uh, versus the uh, uh, curiositas also 10 years old and i preferred by far the curiositas this is a bit too engineered for me this is not bad some say will still open up but for me it's uh too modern peated space side and uh, if we go uh, in continental peat i would even prefer to keep my odd more official i mean there you have it again a uh, space cider and alas i'm not gonna stop there because yeah i'm gonna shock a lot of people uh it's again a space side it's an iconic distillery it's a great distillery uh it's an expression i really struggle with uh, i tried another batch so it's 2020 you see the batch number which honestly doesn't make a lot of sense because we see it year after year for a long time and when you check it on whiskey base or elsewhere you don't understand what that batch code mean it doesn't make really sense for me uh, if it's more than a year batch number okay so yeah uh, it might have been this one in the first uh, list of three because maybe it will s open up later on but again it will be a matter of uh, shall i buy a whiskey because it pleases me for half of the quantity i i i paid the double for if it makes sense mm, no also i had some indic regular keys that were better than this one and they are like the 17 over this one and the 23 i'm not even saying it's a masterpiece so yeah a bit too close uh, some nice caramel etc but the profile is a bit too close for me it's a bit frustrating um and 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 the is it chill filtered or not uh i'm not sure i gave the answer in the video i made um is i think it's colored and this is part of the problem by the way but yeah i might be a very special warm tabs etc distillery but finally uh for me it doesn't really really make it i'm gonna continue by alphabetical order mixing different types of scotch whiskies so don't be surprised one of the biggest not biggest because i didn't have a lot of expectation to be honest of those last years was this a 12 shivas blended scotch whiskey uh i won't be very long because i already did a video about a shivas and also a very old version of this which was way better but yeah it's so rounded that it gets bland uh and uh, for now the 18 years old remain my favorite uh, so while i want to replace the 12 i will replace the 18 now i retried this recently the 15 also shivas and actually it was not so bad compared to uh the beginning but then again it's a bit higher priced than the 12 and is it really much better mm, no, i don't think so uh also way more seductive on the caramel side toffee side but if something's missing maybe the abv may be something else to make it pass on the upper category and retain my attention enough to replace it so there you have it again something i was disappointed with now this will be less a surprise and uh, this is an exception to what i said a limited release but it's a limited release in a 
uh, a range of vintages which is permanent. So the vintage changes, I tried several ones. Uh, this was, was not bad, it's a Dalmore 2002. <sighs> what can I say? Uh, bottled in 2013, ex bourbon, ex sherry Oloroso, ex Moscatel, ex Cabernet Sauvignon. Basically, it's a cheaper version with a few less uh, cask types than the Alexander III. But the Alexander III I have, which is uh, around that time, it's yeah, probably seven or eight or more um, older. Ooh, sorry, I didn't have slept well. I had a, a painful night and, <laughs> and beginning of the day, a lot of stress. But I hope one of the main problems at the moment, the domestic one, is now solved. We'll see that. Um, so yeah, uh, not a bad whiskey. Don't want to retry them because I had to eat in between. Normally I lunch after my videos, but I had to do it for... Yeah, it's a bit too worked. Uh, engineered in, in the not in the best sense of it now you're gonna see unfortunately two whiskies from the same single malt distillery which i like a lot not this version but the distillery uh this is the a shame it's called founders reserve because i had the chance to visit the distillery and as a guardian of glenlivet to try a founders rivers reserve a uh, small batch of single cask, I don't remember, at high strength and uh, unadulterated, non shell filtered, etc. And uh, it was absolutely gorgeous. This is a poor, uh, poor, ma poor men's Glenlivet, if I may say. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is not bad. I can't say it's bad. It's just uh, an not enough mature and not enough pushed forward expression of Glenlivet and it's a uh, nice blue label okay cerulean uh, color but uh, no 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 um, value for value uh, around the same price I would rather go for a Glenmore GX or Glenmore G10 than this unfortunately or reserve it to mixing Another disappointment and a bottle I will not restock is this French Oak Reserve Glenlivet 15 years old, which was so amazing in the early 2000, uh, mid 2000 and, and, and more. Uh, it's only a few years ago started to be bland like hell. And even in those years, 2011, it's only the shadow of, of what it was. Uh, years ago and uh, I really regret it because it has a lot of character coming on from those limousin casks ex cognac cask c'est la vie once again you cannot please everyone and now we're gonna go to uh, something a bit special and limited but still a lot of bottles per year uh, this uh, it's not finished, but I had to put it into the, the left, or the lo little left in the sample. This was one of the best Lagavulin Distillers Edition ever released, in my opinion. It's a 1991 bottle, 2007. It's fantastic. The PX is uh, uh, married with the, the, the distillate in a way that really uh, works super well. Uh, this is this still has a lot of character of the 16 but it's almost this one is almost you won't believe me is almost feel like 46 percent uh it feels like way older but uh while this 91 was uh, amazing the 93 was interesting as well but started to show signs of decline and the 2000 uh the uh, 90 um, 95 and the followers I try I didn't try those last years They don't deliver as before. Uh, it's uh, you you can feel it has been engineered uh, a lot of wood tech in the, in the um, <sighs> Ch 
Richard Oak and stuff and and also Younger Spirit. Younger Spirit, they dropped the vintage I heard uh, for this series. So no, I won't buy again. Uh, uh, and also uh, value wise, the price is starts to be insane for this. Uh, over 120 or 30, I heard it's it's not possible. I mean, it's it's too much for what it is now. So uh, get you a 12 uh, cast shrink instead, and that's it. Honestly, we have two whiskeys left. 40 minutes. It's a bit long, but uh, I have stopped. Talisker, I love this distillery. This is not the latest. Uh, I hate the new uh, packaging with the labeled cuts and. Uh, uh, but I bought another bottle of this, but this I use for blending or mixing uh, home uh, and also sometimes to spread on some things to eat. Uh, but it comes across a bit harsher and a bit less immature and more uh, impetuous than the storm. If I had to buy something else than the 10 years old, I mean, official. This is, is a bit disjointed, a bit unbalanced compared to the Storm. So I would prefer the Storm than this. And this why I want to replace it after the <laughs> next bottle I have. Now, a distillery which is a bit less well known by the, the big audience. Uh, and the perfect example, Tully Bardine, a perfect example of how a Sauterne finish can, instead of bringing sweeter, mellower, more complex, more interesting notes will provide more oak, more tannins, more spices and not be so much an added value. So that's why this one uh, I will not replace it as well. So there you have it. In total 18 whiskies mentioned there. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are you might disagree a lot or a, a little, but um, here's my take on it. Again, regarding the importance of my collection in numbers of bottles, and also uh, the fact that I need to make room. And I need to find whiskies that suit more to my palate as it is now. Voila, voila. Bye-bye. See you soon. Like and subscribe. Subscribe.